Hi guys, Squall here, and welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. I'm enjoying this game. I think there's a patch this week. Uh, we should fix some of the issues that uh, we've all been seeing. Anyway, I decided to... Um, we just set up our miner up there with our coal run, if you remember. And uh, I just decided to jump off here and have a quick look around. And then as I was wandering around, just picking up leaves, I heard the noise. The noise of the slug. Actually, it's not just the noise of the slug. It's the noise of um, some particular thing. Uh, in this case, it's a slug, but it could be all number of things. Anyway, let's go and get this thing. Because we need to get up there. Where's he going to let me build another one here? No, of course it's not. I don't have the, the jetpack or anything yet, which we can get later on by doing a bit of research. But this is, uh, if you like, the crude way of doing it for now. Looks like we're going to have to go a bit further up. We've got all these bits back in a second. There we go. Green power slug. Wonderful. And then we'll just get all this stuff back. So we got our materials back. And then we'll have another quick look around. I can hear another noise. Ooh, bacon agaric. They're quite useful. They're pretty good healers, actually. Actually, if you look bottom left, I've got two hit points missing down here. Put these in your hand. Wonderful stuff. Raw bacon. Imagine that. Imagine a bacon plant. How brilliant would that be? I'd grow bacon plants. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. What I'm actually looking for is just... Um, just been a bit nosy, see if I can find things, because some things in this game you can only find by discovering. For example... Uh, Katerium ore. Katerium ore is like uh, gold, basically. And if you find it... It's definitely getting louder. I reckon it must be up there. Uh, if you find it, grab yourself some, stick it in the research chamber. And uh, it will unlock stuff for you, unlock certain techs. Uh, there are some ores and bits and pieces around that don't do anything yet. Um, I think sulfur's one of them, like they haven't built out the tech tree for sulfur. So even if you research it, it won't actually do anything. Um, but Katerium ore is definitely useful. So if we do see any, definitely pick it up. And the reason I'm picking these flowers up, uh, later on when we get the paint gun, we can actually paint things. Okay. Floating bacon. <laughs> later on when we can uh, paint things, it uses flower petals uh, in order to provide the ink. So it looks like there's plenty of these around here. There's no cave here, is there? No. All right, so we've got our floating mine up there. Uh, is that, what is that? Limestone. What a really weird place for limestone. <laughs> I think that shouldn't be there. Okay, let's head back to base because I can't see anything. Unless there's anything over here. Don't see any random ore lying around. This is like it's a plant you can't interact with. I feel like I'm probably heading into the deadly zone here. Oh, what's that? Hello! Nice! Don't see any enemies around. Okay, what's this? We've got wire. Pick up that. Uh, we'll pick up the wire here. Nothing there. Usually you'll get like so, yeah, circuit boards. We can't even make those things yet. We could try putting it in the research chamber. I don't actually know if that will do anything yet, but we'll try it when we get back. Normally, you can just get some nice bits of salvage from this. And if you're really lucky, like a hard drive or something. Let's grab the circuit boards and wire. Let's see what it wants. Okay, we have to give it 12 screws, which we can do. We can put that in there, pull the handle. That's quite a low requirement. I've never seen a requirement that low before. Yep, we get a hard drive. Sweet! Normally, um, it will be something else, but it will, often you'll find one where you have to give it so many megawatts of power to unlock it, which basically means constructing some biogenerators on the fly and, uh, and unlocking it that way. But that was very, very simple. But again, if I hadn't been walking around with screws on me, randomly, I would have had to uh, have made them. Limestone, that's no good, is it? I can hear something. 
Whoa. All right, are you take that's going to be the abyss, isn't it? That's not going to be anything good down there. All right, well, that was pretty good loot around. Was that a rock? No, I thought that was maybe Kateri more. Never mind. Right, let's head back. So just on the way back to the, the base, I noticed this here. And uh, this is sulfur, which we'll, we'll grab, but I'll show you if you look at your... Um, I wonder if I should put an icon in it for it now. It used to make gunpowder. That's new. It used to just come up as like a white icon. So we'll grab that sulfur. Um, see if it can research it in the man. Don't know if it will. It says used to make gunpowder, which implies it knows what the tech tree is. So definitely worth a look. We'll also grab these nuts for healing. And uh, check on the status of the space elevator, because I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what state it's in at the moment in terms of research capability. Is that an ore mine? Limestone. Not interested in limestone. Yeah, this here, um, if you look, these are all inputs into the space elevator. I think they're so that maybe later on uh, you can feed it with material as opposed to having to walk over here and submit it. Uh, you could just belt feed stuff, but yeah. Uh, so that's 500 modular frames and 150 motors. That is going to take a bit of time to do. 500 modular frames is, is serious business, uh, but we need to start down the path of making steel, which is something that we need to set up. Let's just double check that everything's working here. Yeah, looks like we've got copper on the go. That seems to be working okay. Being belted over. I think we've still got storage here, haven't we? Yeah, loads of copper wire here. We ever want it. And then uh, we'll just check on the coal over here. Crikey, I forgot about these iron ore. Is that iron ore as well? Okay, there's iron ore for days here. That's crazy. Actually, you know what? That's super convenient. Iron ore here with coal equals steel. We can create a mine shaft, a mine shaft there and belt it all in and instantly make steel. That's actually super convenient. Uh, that looks to be the no. That's right. I thought I'd done something wrong then. Okay, let's have a look what's going on. We have nothing here. Has that all been belted away? Okay, something's not right with the pickup. Yeah, this is the out. You can tell by the arrow. Uh, that's the in, but nothing has appeared. Which means the coal truck has not unloaded properly. Okay, let's find out what's going on. Here he is. Is it not powered? It's powered. Why did he load it? Okay, disable autopilot for a second because something... I need to figure out what's going on here. It tried to load the truck up. Uh, so look what's in the back. It's full of coal, but it's not been unloaded. Hmm. Okay, I figured it out. My mistake. If we actually look at the truck config, there's a truck station config, there's a load and there's an unload. So this is an unloading bay, so we have to tell it's an unloading bay, uh, which is my bad. So hopefully... If we jump back in here and autopilot, I'm kind of hoping it will carry on from there. Yes, it looks like it will. And it should, in theory, unload. Yeah, that looks better. So it now grabs a box instead of dropping a box in there. And then coal. Yay! Coal comes out and it will spew back into the refuel point. So it should get refueled. Good times. All right, it's a good job we uh, checked all that. Right, let's now get on with the subject of building a smelting array. So we need to get over there and figure out what's going on. First of all, I need to get up there. Okay, I've uh, added a little bit of floor upstairs, not much, just a bit more to give us some width. And then <clears throat> realize that what we now need to do is build the foundry. Now, the foundry uh, is this thing. This is the thing that's going to make the steel for us. And we're going to have to work out the ratios as we go along. But what we need to do first is build one in order to see what its inputs and outputs are. This is something that 
in satisfactory, I think they need to change. I would like to see what the... I would like to be able to view what the input-output ratios are on this thing without having to build one first, but at the moment, that's the only way of doing it or going online to find out. Uh, so what we need to do is build one of these things. We need to build encased industrial beams and steel pipes. So ironically enough, in order to build a foundry which makes steel, you need steel. So there's a bit of a chicken and egg thing going on here. Uh, but just before we start that, I'm just going to see if we can put anything in the mem. Oh, Hank. Yeah, yellow slugs have been analysed. That's been done. Uh, so there's the hard drive. This slug can be harvested and yeah, converted yeah, yeah. into two power shards that function with current fixit technology. Several buildings would be capable of performing over 100% yep. capacity Shush. if Shush. infused. Shush. <laughs> Uh, let's just quickly restart the research of the second hard drive uh, just so it gets on with that. That should give us an alternative blueprint. Uh, we'll get that kicked off. Yeah, so what she's basically saying is we've researched the yellow slug. Uh, you can now use, you can now make yellow shards, but you have to basically do this unlock first by giving us some stuff. Uh, so that's no problem. If we find more yellow shards later, we'll, we'll get the unlock. For now, let's make some steel. So we need to build, according to this, 14 steel pipes, uh, which requires steel ingots steel ingots requires iron ore and coal so we're going to need to go and grab some of that in case the industrial beams requires a steel beam and a steel beam is made from iron ingots and it requires concrete so really we need to grab some iron ore some coal and some concrete fairly easily done we just need to run over to the iron ore mine down here uh, we'll probably want to build a miner as well because we need to extract that iron ore next to the coal so we'll do that Looks like the iron ore belt is not exactly shifting along. Maybe there's some in here. There we go. So we'll grab, I don't know, a couple of those. We'll go upstairs and see if we can grab some concrete. Which is going in there. Into storage. This is why I like storage, because it allows you to just quickly jump in and grab stuff. But that's not where that's going. Concrete's going over here. The problem is I've got a few different save games and I keep getting confused between <laughs> which base has got which were. So it's like, oh, where did I put stuff this time? So that's that. And we just need to grab some coal and we should be good to go. Also, I'm going to start using the other kinds of wall, not this one. I'm going to start using, I'm going to get rid of this kind of wall. And I'm going to start using uh, this kind of wall. And the reason is, is because that wall is paintable. This this corrugated kind of iron, whatever this is, is not paintable, but this particular one is. And when we get the paint gun, we'll be able to change the color of the wall from the outside, so it's not just orange. We don't have the paint gun yet. Uh, however, on other bases, I've built huge bases and then put loads of iron wall up, only to realize I can't actually paint it, which really sucks. Okay, this should start unloading coal. Yeah, there we go, look. So you can see already that this thing isn't able to unload quickly enough on a Mark II belt. But if you go to our logistics, we don't have the Mark III belt yet. So, you know, we can't make that exit any quicker than that. Um, but this is going to fill up fairly soon anyway. It means that when the truck comes over, um, it's probably going to not be able to fully unload at some point. But, you know, not a lot we can do until we've got the tech. Right, steel ingots. Uh, we can make these now, so we'll just make a bunch of those. Unfortunately, it takes five. If you look at that little hammer symbol, it has four next to it. It means it takes like five um, crafting ticks, if you know if you understand what I mean. Like every time it clicks across the screen, it can take four units of crafting time. This is still a lot quicker than the, uh, the smelter will do it. In fact, there's a lot of things that you can make at the crafting bench that are way quicker to craft by hand than they are to actually craft in a huge multi-million pound machine, which makes no sense, but is obviously done for gameplay purposes, I guess. Right, that should be enough. How many? We need 14 of them, three of them. Okay, those requires that. So we'll get the ingots together. Steel beam, one, two, three. Actually, we'll, we'll double up on these numbers just in case we're able to make two foundries. I don't know what the ratios are yet, but we'll see if we can get away with it. Uh, so six of them, and then we want uh, 28 of these. Look how quick they are to make. 
There you go, 28 of them. And we've got plenty of concrete, so we should be able to build those foundries. Uh, what about the belt? We've got plenty of that, plenty of that. Good. Pretty much got everything we need. Of course, there's no lighting in this game yet, so but they are due to add it. That's on the roadmap. But right now, at night time, it just it gets crazy dark, especially when you've got... When you start doing multi-floor bases with roofs over your head, it, it can get really dark inside. So what I'm thinking is uh, we've got coal there. So we'll probably have coal coming out of a wall there. If we build another steel mine, uh, steel mine, iron ore mine there, we can run the belt here. So perhaps what we could do is, uh, let's think, we go to walls, go to single conveyor. Actually, we'll make that one. No, we'll paint it. We'll paint it. We could put like one like that and one like that. And then here, we could perhaps have something like that going on. Yeah, so we're basically pulling a belt of iron and a belt of coal. And then we bring it over here to where we're going to smelt it. So let's build a few more floor tiles here. Uh, so let's drop a foundry around and find out uh, what the ratios are. Okay, so you can see a foundry's got two inputs, so we're probably going to leave space to actually split this. Plus, we don't really want to come straight in because we can't get across here if we ever want to walk here. So what we probably want to do is immediately uh, like elevate this up. So you know, at the very least, we can walk under it like that, and then leave this as a walkway. Uh, so then we want to like bring it down then we'll effectively I am thinking ahead here we'll probably split it like that say it's that tile there isn't it so perhaps we'll split it like that and then send it into the smelters over here and then maybe you know we can like loop it back and take it over there for production or you know it really doesn't matter we've got a huge amount of space here to build on uh, so let's start off by putting one of these things down uh, let's put it up quickly and then find out what the ratios are for steel ingot. Right, so we've got 45 iron ore per minute and 45 coal per minute. And that will produce 30 steel ingots per minute. So 45, if we think about this, logistically, on a Mark 1 belt, if we need to bring 45 into two smelters, that's 90. So that's not going to cut it. It's going to have to be that. Uh, and if we wanted to try and we could, if we had one of them at 120 and we could belt 120, we can almost do three foundries, almost. Because three foundries, three times 45 is going to be 135, isn't it? If I got my maths right. Um, which is not quite 120, but it's still pretty decent. And the splitter splits into three quite conveniently. So I think that's probably the best. We'll just have three foundries running at slightly under capacity until we can get the faster belts and bring it in. Uh, so we want one of them. So if we line our first one up like this, and then our second one. Now, I like leaving a bit of space just in case we want to do things uh, later on. I also like leaving a one-tile gap down there so that we can, you know, if we want to chain power lines, we can do it quite easily. Uh, we can't build a third one yet because we didn't bring enough stuff with us. Uh, and also, we're going to have to stack these things. How do you stack splitters? How do you stack a splitter? You can't. Well, that's not true. You can, but you can't. I'll explain what I mean. It won't let me put one on top like that. I cannot do it. It physically will not let me stack a splitter. But what we can do is we can do sneaky things so if we build one of them up and then we build one of them up and then we do a belt like that then we can put a splitter on it like that and that splitter will sit there like that which when we remove the rest of this stuff 
it will have a tendency to float. Uh, we'll need to remove it so that we can, for example, you know, do that. It's not a perfect solution. And also this gets in the way of the input, so that will have to go as well, which then leaves you with a totally floating splitter. But that's what we're left with at the moment. We don't really have an ideal solution to this. Um, but we can belt one into there like that. We can belt the other one into there like that. In fact, they can be Mark 1, can't they? They don't need to be Mark 2. We'll drop them down to Mark 1 conveyors. Uh, so that's just one way of doing it. There are others. You can elevate this one slightly as well. If, uh, if, if, you, if, you know, if it feels better for you, you can elevate this one. But, I, you know, given the constraints of, of what the game allows at the moment, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too fussed about the way, the way it looks. Uh, so if we do that, then what we would do is we'd have a fast belt coming in like this. Um, let's get rid of that for a second. That fast belt could run to there. That fast belt could come to here. Come to here. And down to there. And then we'd have a normal belt doing that. And that's that. That's basically... That's two foundries. We can build a third, wire it all up, and as soon as we start pumping it with material, we're going to get a lot of steel coming out of here. Uh, what was the rate? Yeah, 30 per minute. So we're going to get 60 out of this, plus another one would give us 90 steel per minute. That's quite a lot of steel. So the first thing, of course, I would do is buffer it with a, with a storage thing. So we go to organization, storage container, and <clears throat> we want it on the middle one because we can merge it in. So we hold our control key. That gives us that. And then we build logistics merger. So we want it. So this is where it gets interesting. How's it done that game? Game plus. Organization container. So yeah, the control key doesn't help you here. You have to let go of the control key. And you go logistics merge. So that's a normal belt. Put a merger on it. So just look, you just look at the belt and it will put the merge on it like that. And that will allow us to merge in from here on a normal belt. Now this is chucking out at 45, this can do 60, so that's fine. 45, coming in, no problem at all. This one, this has to be a Mark II belt. Because if it's taking 45, 45, and 45, there's 135 per minute needs to come out of here. And we know that's a 120 is a limiting factor, but that's the way it is. Um, we could double stack that, but we'll single stack it for now. Anyway, that means as soon as we can turn this thing on, uh, this thing will start producing steel. So what we need to do is get power over here. And there are power lines running outside of the base here. Currently, there are no kind of wall items that accept power. And this is something I think, I believe, the devs are going to put in. But right now, there is no way to bring power in to like, you know, a wall item which has a socket on it so that we can just connect power to it and then on the inside relay the power on doesn't currently exist uh, so what we're gonna have to do for now is do something uh not so much hacky but not you know not what i would call ideal uh, we can get that power line there for example so if you put your power line down first and then connect your power into it then you can put that up yeah what you can't do is you can't do it the other way around you can't Put the wall up and then connect the wire through it. It says it's obstructing it, but it will let you do it that way. If you feel like it, if that feels a bit too hacky, one thing you can do, just to make it look slightly better, you know, you could do that, which makes it look like a window. Um, you know, it depends how you feel about these things. Uh, so, right, let's drop a power pole right there. That will relay to that. Actually, we're going to have one here as well. We'll relay really like to there. That can go to there. Uh, that 
come through to here. That can feed the right machine. That can feed the right machine. Yeah, and then when the machine comes here, we can connect to 21 of these. And we'll have a, a third one coming in. But first, I think it's more important to just get this thing online and then we can build the third foundry afterwards. Let's quickly run up here. It sounds like the truck's just left. How's he getting on? Oh, okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. That's probably going to start backing up soon, though. Yep, that's nearly full. So, we need to fast belt this out of here. So, we'll get a fast belt from there. And we shall have a fast belt. It doesn't really matter which way we put those. Um, the foundry will just accept them either way. Would be kind of nice to have a ramp. Get rid of that. Uh, so we probably want to have something like... We just want to guide this thing in, really, don't we? Something like that will do. Uh, let's just elevate it up a couple. Actually, let's elevate that one up one. Like that. Is that fast belt to the... Fast belt... Oh, I can't afford it. No reinforced plates. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to go and make a few bits and pieces. Actually, let's see if we can do anything with the crafting bench. Sometimes you can make things. You, like we say, you can make a couple of... Uh, all you got to do is make some more screws. Sometimes, if you just throw a crafting bench down, you can quickly make the things you need rather than running back for stuff, which can be pretty handy. Um... The only thing that we can't make at the moment with a crafting bench that we need right now is a miner. Uh, but we can quickly throw it on a workshop. Knock up a portable miner. And throw it away. Easy money. Uh, so if we have a look how much a Mark II miner would cost. If you want a Mark II miner out there, it's going to extract at 120 and we can consume at 135, so we do need a Mark II uh, if we want to mine everything. So we're going to need more of these things. We'll put that on plus. Plenty more bits and pieces that we need. I'll make this stuff up, and then we'll uh, we'll get on with building it. So on my way over to get bunches of stuff, I realized that we actually had a Katarium ore right here in the base. <laughs> I totally forgot we had this. So we're going to quickly grab this. I can't believe our base is, like, right on top of a Katerium Ore. Now, here's, here's one thing which some of you may not have realised. There's only actually one map in this game at the moment. Although you've got three maps to choose from at the start, that's not actually three maps. That's three starting positions in the same map. That threw me at first as well, just in case you hadn't realised. But on this one, you start right next to Katerium Ore. On the rocky one, for example, the Katerium Ore is, like, a good like half a kilometer to a kilometer away. So different resources are spreading different different ways on different maps. How far is this? Oh, this is finished, look. Okay. We have to decide what we want so we can research this Katerium more, which is something I want to do. Uh, the heavy modular flame... Flame? Hello. The heavy modular frame blueprint. This is an alternative to making the, modu the heavy modular frame. This is an alternative to making screws, uh, which makes them 90 per minute. That is... About the same rate but that uses iron ingots instead of iron ore uh, this is an iron ingot that uses copper and iron so if you find yourself in a situation with not much iron but plenty of copper maybe then that's useful but that's not useful for us so i'm going to choose this for now uh, and we're going to click on katerium ore it wants 25 of it and we're going to start researching that's going to take 15 minutes and also we can research the bacon later and the pale berries which is something else we've got so we'll put the We'll put the kind of spare ingredients that we don't need because we've got some of these already. We'll stick that in there. Uh, the bacon, agaric, I'll put in there as well to research because we can always we can always heal ourselves with the nuts at the moment. Uh, and the sulfur, we need to research if we can. I don't know if it'll let us yet. It won't let us research it unless they've built a tech tree for it, um, which I don't think they have. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think they have for sulfur. Right, we should have everything that we need to make um, the steel bits and pieces. So I shall 
build those out. Uh, let's see. Oh, the power shard we can make. Might as well make that over here. Convert the worm. Uh, encased industrial beams, I just need four of those. So we'll just, there we go. Just need a few of these. What do you need? What do you need? You need 12 of those things. Blimey. Get one, two, three. Okay, we can now build a Mark II Miner. We've got plenty of stuff there. We're going to need to get rid of this first. We will rock you. <laughs> we should be able to get steel online very quickly now. Right, Mark II Miner. Let's orient it this way, like that. Actually, let's try and stand... Maybe point it towards the... That's better. Put a power pole next to it. I think that's a bar. Mark 2 conveyor. And link the power to here. That should put it online. Why is that saying 60? Why does that say 60 per minute? It's not right. Is this, oh, it's an impure. Wait a second, what's this one? Oh, that's impure as well. What a scumbag. What a scumbag. I could have built normal miners. Hmm. That's something I should have spotted. That's something I should have spotted. That's an impure ore there, you see. And a Mark II miner won't extract 120 on an impure ore. It'll only do it on a normal one. So what we'll do is we'll stick two. Let's build a crafting bench quickly. Crafting bench or workshop. We need to build another one of these. Well, that was unexpected. So we'll have a Mark 1 miner. Another Mark 1 miner here. And we shall do Mark 2 belt to the bar. We'll stick a merger on the line. And we need a Mark 1 belt into the bar. That can be a Mark 1 belt. So Mark 1 belt, Mark 1 belt, Mark 2 going out. That's going to take us 60 out of here. And a 60 out of there. Is that still connected? And it's going to merge it into 120 on the line, which is what we need. I'll bring that over there. So there you go. Lesson learned right there, eh? That should now be a full 120 stack belt coming out once it all starts merging. That doesn't look very full. Thirty per minute. Oh my god! I just learned something else. Well, I did not know that. I did not know that. I. Th mm, that makes sense. <laughs> so you need a Mark II miner, which can produce double a Mark One miner. But if it's impure, it halves it. So the sixty of a Mark II miner is halved. But the third, the 60 of a Mark 1 miner is also halved. Wowzers. Which 
means we have to do this. Just like that now, is it? Well, I just learned something. So we'll put the merger there. We'll upgrade that to Mark II Bell. We'll get that one online. So I need a Mark II Miner here as well, which is something we're going to have to um, build stuff for uh, because I don't have enough encased industrial beams. We have everything else. That makes a lot of sense, but it's not something that I immediately considered. I think we just need to have like 12 beams or something. So although we've got two two mines nearby, because they're impure, they're not particularly good. I'll take a sec to knock up a few of these. Point it over there. Normal belt. Straight into the merge. Put the power on. Good job of check, though, eh? Right, so that should now be a full 120 stack coming all the way down here. So all we need to do now is finish that to there. We can go inside and check what's going on. And then we just need to build the uh, third foundry. Now, what we do with the actual steel coming out, that's that's the, the, the next problem. For now, we're just going to store it, but we are going to figure out the logistics. And this is something I'm still trying to work out in my head, is what is the best way in this game of... I've started to work out how to bust logistics around to get, like, a main bus kind of thing, but it's like, you know, we're producing reinforced iron plates down there, for example, and rotors are down there, but then we've got steel over here, so how much steel do we need to get down there, or do we bring that up to here, and if so, how do we do it? You know, there's all these kind of question marks. What if I chose steel and got for that one? Yeah, this one's making stuff. Right, so it shows the efficiency here, which is 100%, so it's being fed with all the coal and iron it can take, and it's therefore throwing out 30 ingots per minute on both sides, so we're starting to build up a nice selection of ingots. Right, I'll grab enough stuff and we'll make our final foundry and then we'll be done with the steel production for now. And there's the foundry. Link up to the power supply. Set the recipe and then we just need to bring that into the bar. Oh, the power pole's going to get in the way. Scumbag power pole. Okay, it doesn't like that. Encroaching on another one's clearance. Okay, that's utter nonsense, but what we'll do is we'll maybe just give it a little bit of assistance. As it was cutting the bend, it was chopping into that thing, so it thought that it was building on its hitbox, basically, uh, which you can roughly see here. There we go. And that should be that. Now, each of these will drop from 100%. Um, as this machine kind of gets up to full speed. At the moment, there, there's some kind of buffering down the line, so it might cope a little better, but there will be, like, small gaps in this belt because it can't split what's coming out of there, which is 120. It just can't split it three ways because they're only going to get 40 each, and they need 45, so there is going to be a little bit of deficiency, but it's, like, you know, it's going to be, like, 7% or something. It's nothing. What we have is very quick stealing got production online which allows us to make if you look at the crafting bench we can now go on if we want to 
have been, you know, we're producing these by by the number now. We can then use them in here. We can straight up make steel ingots without any other ingredients. We can straight up make steel pipes without any other ingredients. And if you bring some of that concrete from over the other side of the factory, we can even make encased industrial beams uh, just by combining it. So there's plenty of stuff that uses steel that we're going to need. Uh, so that will have to be subject of the next video. So this one was basically about getting steel online, which we've now done. The next video will be about uh, creating products from that steel. That's it for this video, guys. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the series. Until the next one, take care. Happy manufacturing.